friends, this is Gosha from Cosmic Agency. I'm very happy to be here with you because I am finally able to present to you the first video, first episode of the long series, I think the longest one I've ever done, Interstellar Life. It's going to be about 16 different videos distributed in different way. It's not going to be straight 16 videos. Mm about different aspects of interstellar life. So the first video, this one here, is going to be about Toleka, everything I have accumulated throughout the years about Toleka, but other videos will be also about other aspects of interstellar life. So different, different things will be presented here in this series. In this one, it's mainly Aneka, Aneka of Temer speaking, but there are also fragments from Svaro Vera, Yashi, and also, during the video, I will present the part where Athena Svaru will share, for the first time she's sharing, they are sharing, a CGI made of Toleka. This is a very detailed CGI picture that took her a very long time to prepare, and it was May 2022. So it was um, last year that she sent that picture to us and it's the first time I am presenting it to you. I want to thank Athena for uh, taking the time and preparing this image. But that's going to be a bit later on in the video. So enjoy it and until very 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 soon. Originally in Spanish, between 2020 and 2021. What else would you like to tell us about your ship? Everything as much as possible. I feel we would give you a better understanding of how we live. The problem is that I feel that the public will take it as a sci-fi movie ship, like from Alien or Warlocks. But we know Hollywood does that to discredit and control designs. Nine Tolica heavy cruiser and nine City Clea class ships were built, which are the same but one third their size. Mini Tolicas, classified as light cruiser, equal but smaller. It is said that we would be better off in one of those, but the problem is that we already got the Tolica and we need the big flight deck for fighter craft. The ones that concerns us then are the Tolikas. Nine ships, all the same with a few exceptions. Although inside they differ because they're modular. That is, the hull opens up and prefabricated blocks of many decks come out at the front and middle of the ship to accommodate different interiors depending on their mission. The Tolika class is named in keeping with the tradition which is also observed on Earth, of naming the class of ships after their first build of that class. So the SS Tolica is the first one built in the year 1935 Earth reference, and the SS Ventra is the latest and most recent one built and delivered to active service in the year of 2014 Earth reference. Very new. They're virtually the same, with a few improvements. They can only be distinguished by the license plate in the case of the Ventra and the Tolica, because the Tolica's nose is red and the Ventra's is yellow. What does SS stand for? I can't remember. It's an acronym in English that we use because we're talking with the Earth. It's SS equals Starship. Since when is this ship in orbit? Since 1952? Not exactly. It has been there, then it leaves for many years and others come. Then this one comes back. The Tolica was here in 1939 to 45, then left and subsequently returned in 1951-1952. From there to 1975 with the Mayer thing. All of Mayer's contact came out of the ship. Then it left and returned around 2009. Since then, it has been here more or less constantly. On the 
outside, the craft looks like this one, just similar. Up front, it has a stinger. On ours, it's full of cameras and sensors. Some cameras have lenses 2 meters in size and are looking down. This ship is 1,734 meters long, and she is designed to support a crew of 1,800 people. Her serial number is TPT-001, Taigeta Pleiades Temer-001. The Tolika is considered the flagship of Taigeta Fleet and the Queen's Yacht. She's owned by Her Majesty Alanim I of Temer. On the outside, she's charcoal black in color. Taigeta's larger ships carry the Taigeta's emblem and the Federation logo, but this one does not carry the Federation logo, as the Tolika is the Queen's yacht and has a crown instead. About the difference between a Taigetan ship, Alcyone class and Tolika class. An Alcyone class is twice the size of a Tolika class. It's like a battleship. It was built for one purpose only, to dominate a battlefield. A Tolika class, on the other hand, is multi-purpose, with modular decks easily replaceable depending on the mission. An Alcyone is only good for one thing, as a hammer to strike. I'm in a Tolika. The problem is that this ship is from an online collection of warlocks, whatever that is, I don't know. But yes, it's the most similar to the Toleka. Except that this ship has too much stuff on the outside, and the Toleka is longer, with smoother lines. Yes, it is similar. And why is that a problem? Because it looks a lot like the Toleka. So, it looks like they ripped off the design from Warlocks. But as you know, it's always the other way around. have a recreation room inside the ship? Yes, the piano room is downstairs and it's a big room. We always have parties there, and when there are no parties, it is very quiet and lonely there. It's all the way to the front of the ship and all the way down as well, the last deck with a view outside. The room is half a circle with large rectangular windows. The whole wall is a window and about 8 meters high. It's an observation room. In the center of the half circle is a piano. It's a 1900 Steinway & Sons piano rescued by Tractor Beam from a collapsing building in London in 1940 during the Nazi bombardings. It's a full grand, it looks like new. Here only Yasuki plays it and she plays it very well and tremendously complicated things like Chopin. This room has armchairs around the windows to sit and watch outside. Honestly, it makes me dizzy. Looking to the front, bottom left, you see the Earth. That is, the ship is not rotating or orbiting the Earth directly below, but rather on the port or left side of the ship. So for us below, it's not down towards the Earth, but the Earth is passing on the left side of the ship. On the right or starboard side, you see space, stationary ships, and the Moon. It is the same side as my bedroom. I open the window and I see the earth passing by, but not below, but as if my window was looking straight down to the earth. But since for me that is not below, but below is my floor, it makes me quite dizzy. Above that room there is another large room of the same size, directly above, also with windows like that. It is the operating room. The windows are about 8 meters high, that is why it is an observation room. And to see in real time or live something happening outside without losing control over the ship, 
since it has duplicate bridge and navigation and CIC controls from there. Below ahead is the observation room with the piano. Above this room is the operations room. Then in that sector around and behind these two large rooms, there is the living area where the private quarters and bedrooms are located. Where the rooms end, towards the back, there is the main dining room and the windowless kitchens. Towards the back, finishing off this living area, begins a green area with some trees, a pond with fish, otters, and ornamental plants. This deck has two huge circular windows, one on each side of the ship, and this area goes from side to side of the ship. It has small climate generators, as well as solar radiation lamps that emulate the passage of the sun and a day inside, night and all controlled by a computer. There is even a swamp with frogs and toads. Above this deck, there is the gym, and to the rear, past this area, there is a pool with a window to the outside. On one side, you can see the space outside as you swim. To the rear of this area were the cadet quarters, but they were removed to make room for two aquatic spas and two other exercise pools with gyms, and another area behind the recreation area, with what is used or known as a deck where you can have computer-generated experiences or total immersion games, although personally, this can also be done from the private quarters. Finishing this area, there is a small hangar or service hangar, which is on the sides of the ship where huge rectangular doors open to dock with another large ship to transfer things, supplies and provisions. There is machinery in such as forklifts and cranes, and it is the shuttle area, where there are some small, long ones similar to those used in Star Trek. They open at the back or to the sides, and it is also the area of the discs, which are also shuttles, where the Class 2 and Class 3 discoidal ships are kept. At the aft end of this deck are the water processing tanks. Up above all this are the maintenance deck with gravity generators. Back in the middle area, there is a reactor control room and the full zero-point reactors. On top of all this, there are more engineering decks, electrical system passages, air and life support systems. And on top of all of this together, from front to back, there is the traditional agriculture and aquaponics deck. Around this area, in its perimeter, there is a long and wide corridor that is for maintenance machinery, and it is the perimeter corridor that is a circuit around the agriculture area that is the one that we use for bicycles, since now in the agriculture area there is only one corner with plants. The rest we use for other things that have to do with maintaining morale, like the bike track. Directly above, there is the main hangar, and it is the largest free area of the ship, and it is where the larger fighter ships are parked. There are also their maintenance areas, where the services, crane systems and facilities to keep them running. Above this area, there is another upper service deck with more artificial gravity generation systems and the hull, and outside to the rear, there is a solid structure bridge narrower than the rest of the hull, and this area contains the capacitors for the engines. Behind this area, there is the engineering craft module and engines, four main, four backup, and maneuvering. The hangar is large, almost 800 usable meters. It's like an aircraft carrier, but it covers its flight deck. It doesn't have it exposed and there are actually two hangars there. The big one for fighter craft and the service hangar down the back next to reactors. The Tolaga hangar looks pretty much the same as this. Even more similar, 
down to the shape of the roof. Wow. And the light, is it similar? There are various kinds of light. Yes, it looks like that. That one is almost identical to the tolica inside. Notice the circles with crosses on the floor. That is to tie ships down so they don't move. Aircraft carriers have them too. The shape of the hangar roof here is like in the previous two, pyramid shaped. Directly forward, in front of the ship, especially in front of the hangar area, there are the main water tanks, to the front, to serve as an extra radiation shield for the rest of the ship. And just in front, there is another large two-story room, which is the command bridge on the upper floor, and the navigation and CIC room on the lower floor. It is from here that the ship is operated. Below these areas, there is a distribution or walkthrough area that is large, with a lot of two-story design. It reminds me of an earth mall or shopping center. It has transparent roofs and sides in places, 